Greetings, programmers. Busted Thumbs Back, Episode 6 for our Music Studio Player. I was rushing a little bit on the last one, and I didn't get to quite show you everything I wanted to do. And I also didn't have it down right exactly uh, right. Uh, this is where we were. We were trying to insert items into the Music for Instrument 1 and the Music for Instrument 2. And I wanted to show you that by popping up the list like that. Uh, so, <laughs> clearly, what I wanted to do is work on, for, for the melody, I wanted to go through everything inside of the melody, uh, but I, di I didn't want to replace it inside Twinkle Melody, I wanted to do it inside a music instrument one. So that, these two things needed to change, and I actually can't replace an item if I don't have an item. So I actually, once I've cleared these guys out, I want to make sure that I'm adding uh, kind of a blank item, make that empty, to music instrument one, and do the same thing down here, adding a blank item to a music instrument too. And that allows me to replace that blank item with this stuff that's down here. Um, before we do that, let's go ahead and write the thing which does the clear the current music. I think that should go actually over here in stage. So when I receive clear the current music, uh, what that means is that I want to remove everything from my lists that are inside here. And that simply means that we need, we have four of those. Let's go ahead and delete all of each of the music instruments. And there might be more to this a little bit later. Three and four. Okay. There you go. All right. So that should happen first. Uh, back to our our guy over here. Uh, so when we when we receive this uh, this bit to copy over the, the when the sprite is clicked it's going to cl copy over the music and let's go ahead and make sure that that's now happening. So when I click play here uh, and I show instrument one, well right now it's got that twinkle twinkle little star inside of it, uh, so you're not going to be able to see this working. Let me see if this one has. Okay, that one's empty, so that's good. That's the accompaniment where that's supposed to go. So let's go ahead and. Let that one show. Now if I click on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, they both show up with just one item that's very long. It's that big bunch of data that we put inside of there, but that's fine. It can be long. Absolutely fine. Uh, the other thing that we want to have happen is that uh, all of the song selections need to change and we need to move over to our piano again. So we should, pr that's going to, at some point there's going to be more than one button on here, so we should really be broadcasting an event to tell all of those buttons to go away and to be switching over to the the next screen, which is, which is where our piano is at, and, and then to let our music player know, know that it needs to start playing some music. Okay, so that means we need to broadcast an event again. Once we've copied over the music, let's, uh, we have a show selection screen, let's say, uh, show the players player screen something like that okay and then this guy needs to know that when when he receives show the player screen that he goes ahead and hides and the stage is going to be responsible for when he receives show the selection, so show the player screen. So we've already got show the selection screen. When he shows the player screen, he should switch his backdrop. And right now we'll make that clear. I do have uh, the music player screen, but it's got a lot of uh, extra stuff on it. So th the backdrop has been changed. And I think what we then want to do is broadcast yet another event from here. And that is draw the draw the piano. Now why didn't I just do that off a of show player screen? Well I'm a little concerned uh, that if I draw the piano and then switch the backdrop then I'll lose some of my piano drawing. And it might only happen in, in off cases, but I like to be a little bit more in control of the order of things. So I want the piano always to draw at, only after the backdrop is cleared. So this allows us to control that ordering because this will only happen only after that particular backdrop switches. So that means that we go back into our piano guy 
and we are going to add a receiver for that. And we'll stick those guys onto it. So when it receives draw piano, that should happen. So what I anticipate now happening is that once we run our program, when I click on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, those lists should fill up with all the data that we need to play our song. And uh, we should switch over away from this thing that says select your song and instead see a piano. Okay. So let's uh, let's try that. Let's make it bigger. This is exactly what I want to see here. And then when I click it. There it is. There's our piano again. It's it needs a play button. We'll get that in there, but that's gonna. It's good. We got a li little bit of work to do before we can get to that. All right. So good. I think what we've got now is we've got a, a song that we can play. We've got a music player that needs to do figure out how to play all of that, and we've got some data for it to work with. So in order for us to to do this now, we're gonna have to write a little bit of uh, utility functions. I think. And uh, what, that's, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to be able to read all those things with the commas and the semicolons. We need to turn those into the notes that we need to play. And that's going to take a little bit of fancy work with these joins and things that we've been working with so far. I don't need these guys anymore. That was just for us to learn how to do all of this. So we can get rid of all of this stuff here that we came up with before and start with a clean slate okay so what I'm gonna need to do when I'm reading the when I'm reading through the data is I'm going to need in here yet another list and that uh, that list I'm going to need for each one of these music instruments is to figure out where I currently am it's gonna have some indexes into uh, the the strings that are inside each one of those music instruments. So for this sprite only, I'm going to need four of these guys. And I'm just going to make each one of these What that's uh, what these are are things we can set up inside of uh, when we initialize the variables. So let's make a block that says initialize initialize music indices. Okay, and we're going to do that here. And what it's just simply going to do is going to clear out all those. We're going to delete everything from each one of those lists. Index one, music index two, music index three, music index four. All right. So now, what it needs to do is it needs to when we load in a new song, it needs to know that it needs to start at the very beginning of the data for each one of those things. And so let's look at when do we load in a song. We load in a song uh, over here when we're copying the music. And we're saying show, then show the player sync. So let's go ahead and provide uh, another event that says we're ready to have a new song selected. So after we've done this, copied over the music, let's go ahead and say th that uh, there's new music loaded. Okay, that allows everybody to, to react when new music is loaded including our player. So when he receives the fact that new music has been loaded, he can go ahead and first of all he can also initialize these music indices. That's going to get rid of all of that stuff. And then put uh, we're going to put ones into the places that we need to. So what we're going to do here actually is we're going to do a, a few repeats. 
and we're going to repeat on the length of these musics in the instruments. So what, what I'm doing here is I'm going to say for every item inside of the list uh, of, inside the music instrument, because that's been copied over. In our case, there's only one item or there's zero items in each of these. But for every one of those, I'm going to create an entry inside of our music index list that starts it at one. So it's going to add one to music index one. Okay, then we're going to do that four times because there's four instruments, which I can do by duplicating and then just simply changing these to two and two, three and three, four and four. Okay, so let me show you what the result of this is. I'll, I'll show you these four lists. These are wrong right now. That's four, two, and three because it, it I double click ran it while we were just getting started. But okay, so if we run this program now, there's our little guy in the background. Uh, he put the one inside there because there's just one. Uh, he should have done it in two as well. Oh, that's because I selected the wrong thing. This should be music index. Oops. And once again, wrong thing. Start again. Clear those out. Click on Twinkle Twinkle. And they both have a one inside them. That's what I want. Uh, now, how are we going to use these guys? These guys are going to be very important for reading what the next note is in each of our um, in each of our musics that we're reading. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to simplify this a little bit just for now, and then we'll make it a little more flexible with like we are with all these. But I just want to make um, some variables that tell us what the next note is. Okay, so we said inside of those inside of those um, uh, definitions for those notes, the data that it has a measure, a beat, and measure, a note, and a duration. Okay, so let's go ahead and say. Um, for this for this sprite only next next measure next well that's the, really the next notes measure I'm gonna call this the next note and we don't need these so that's why I'm getting I'm just replacing them next Note beat in measure. Next note duration. Okay. Okay. Now we have to do a little work here, and uh, this is work working with strings. So what we're going to do is make a block that says. Read next note. Okay, uh, and for now we'll, we'll read the next note uh, after after the music is loaded. This will basically read the first note. And so this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Uh, we're going to need another variable, which is we're going to have to be for a temporary. temp read value, something like that. We're th and then we're going to have to create another uh, block here, which is going to read uh, Actually, let's go ahead and just do this. Okay, so the, the purpose of this string right here is to read all of the characters from our current index and put it in to our next, uh, in, into our value that we just set up here, our, our temporary read value. 
Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. What I'm, I'm, and this we're going to just work for uh, instrument one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat until. Uh, we're going to repeat until we see a comma, uh, basically. Uh, we're going to repeat until the item, the, the letter that is in the index that we're working with, which is item one of music index one. Okay, that's the index we're at right now. So the letter that we see in music instrument one, oops, it's actually item, item one of music instrument one, right? We're gonna we'll repeat until that equals our value, which we'll make to be a comma. Okay, and what we're gonna do there now to, is we're gonna start setting our temp read value to a uh, join on it, that uh, the temp read value itself and each letter until we get to that point. Okay. So, so this is simply to set again the temp read value to the join of the temp read value and this same thing right here. Okay, and, and then once we do that, we want to change. our index, oh, shoot, it's actually in a list, so we actually, what we have to do is we have to replace item one of our music index with item one of our music index plus one. And because we want to also pick up that comma, we want that to happen down here too. So let me just show you what this does uh, uh, really quickly. What it should be doing is it should be reading through the item that's inside of uh, our Music for Instrument 1, which is this big long thing, and getting the first item up to that comma. So what it should be doing is finding out that 1 is the next item that's inside of there and putting it in into temp read value. Okay. So in order to make that happen, read next note has to read to comma. Okay. Now this should all happen after I click on twinkle twinkle little star. Let's run it really quickly. And it did exactly what we thought it would do. It read that one and it put it into that value. Now we have to do a lot of stuff like this. This is this is kind of the tricky, complicated, technical stuff. We have to be able to read all four of those values and then move on to the next one. We have to do that really quickly. So we're going to have to set up kind of the logic to do all of that stuff before we can actually play any music. And uh, we'll we'll get through all of that. And this this is probably going to be my longest uh, broadcast to date just because of all of this little work that we have to do to get the data to come in just right. But I want it to be flexible, and that's why we're doing it. So uh, so that's it for this one. We're starting to read in the music, and we'll get to the point after we read in all the music of actually playing it. I will see you in the next time. Goodbye.